Hello folks. It's so nice to see you again. Let's turn this up a little bit. Uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, please subscribe if you like and hit the like button if you like. And uh, welcome back. And thanks to all my subscribers. Yes, I am really happy. You are doing a great job and uh, I hope some of these articles pertain to you that might help you but then might make you disappointed because it seems like that's all we've either got these days. Either a touch of happiness, a whole lot of other. I don't know. Well, <clears throat> uh, America's economy is truly headed for disaster. And we all know that. Yeah, we all know it. I was hoping that sooner or later, you know, we've been, what, two years of just going right on downhill. And I kept hoping and hoping something would give. And it just keeps going downhill. I just don't get it. The White House constantly demonstrates its refusal to be honest about the current status of the economy. After the gross democratic domestic product, I'm sorry about that, after the gross domestic product, the GDP rate sunk for two quarters in a row, the Biden administration tried to change the definition of a recession. Well, that doesn't take a lot of thinking though, does it? I was going to think for a minute. If it's up to Biden, <laughs> that don't take no thinking. <laughs> Amid rising customers' costs, the president and his team downplayed inflation and said everything would be fine. How many times have we heard that one? As Americans are getting laid off from their jobs, the White House is claiming 10,000 million employment opportunities are being created by the current president. Really? Hmm. While the Biden administration continues gaslighting the country about where the economy truly stands, new data proves the economy is even worse off than anyone really anticipated. The truth about today's economy, new information from the Commerce Department reveals fresh updates to GDP and gross domestic income, GDI, rates during 2022's first quarter. The GDI was logged at 0.8% growth. Through by the time the second quarter rolled around, the GDI only rose by 0.1%. Yippee! I bet Biden was just dancing around his richest mansion he owns. <laughs> Similarly, to the GDP rate, the GDI rate significantly determines how the overall economy is doing. This major decline in growth between the first and second quarters of this year tracks with the rise of inflation, however, well, of course. Polls and other economic data show that the polarities of Americans aren't seeing their wages uh, to keep up with the inflation. In fact, some people's wages are greatly declining as they are getting less hours at work, being furloughed by employers wanting to shield their bottom lines. Ultimately, the Biden administration actively contribute to inflation, the GPD, and the GDI rates by passing ridiculous spending bills. Yeah, we know that. The very legislation that was supposed to help the economy heal is actually bringing the economy to its knees. It's just, I told you, it's unbearable. And you want the honest truth in my way of thinking? It's just getting started. We thought it had got started before. Well, that's where we are now. But it's getting started again. Though if you let Biden and his handlers tell it, the economy is doing beautiful. If the nation continues to be forced fed to bad policies, our economy will keep getting worse. I just said that. 
The only way to reverse course is to change the policies being passed into law, undo the damage from bills already decreed. Biden and the Democrats in Congress will not willingly do this. No, we knew that. Democrats have been clear that if they hold on to power in the House and Senate, they'll continue to approve Biden's wish list and pass increasingly radical legis legislation. This is all the more reason for people to turn out in droves this November to elect and re-elect America's first patriots. I agree. I totally agree. Something has got to just give pretty soon. It's just got to. Oh my goodness. One thing after another. I, it's sad. It's sad that a president would bring down a country like this that he lives in. Or does he live here? From what I understood, he lives in his basement most of the time when he goes home. Now that's kind of funny, isn't it? But oh well. <clears throat> I just don't know about nothing anymore. Uh, wait a minute, something went wrong here. Hang on, people. Oh, put that down. Okay. I don't know why that popped back up again, but it did. Here we are. Now, we have Abbott designates Mexican cartels as terrorist organizations. Well, of course they are. I mean, and think about the young people that get hooked into their, filling their brains full of money, money, money. If you work for us and you pass these drugs, you get the money, you bring it back to us, you're going to get double fold. Uh-huh. And if you don't, and if you try to rip them off, you better just kiss your mom and daddy goodbye, honey. Because they're going to kill you. How much plainer can I be? Can I get any plainer? Governor Greg Abbott today issued an executive order designating Mexican drug cartels as terrorist organizations and instructing the Texas Department of Public Safety to take immediate action to keep Texans safe amid the growing national fentanyl crisis. That, that stuff is pure poison. At a round, a round table discussion and press conference in Midlands today, the government also sent a letter to President Joe Biden, oh God, and Vice President Kamala, Kamala Harris, <clears throat> like they're really going to do something about this? He's the one that opened the damn border. Mm, sorry. Requesting federal terrorists classifications for the Sinaloa cartel and the Jalisco, the new generation cartel, as well as other cartels producing and distributing deadly fentanyl. I think they say fentanyl. I, I'm not sure. Uh, it's F-E-N-T-A-N-Y-L. The L looks more like a capital one than it does an L, but fentanyl whatever. Fentanyl is a cl cladidestined killer and Texans are falling victim to the Mexican cartels that are producing it, said Governor Abbott. Cartels are terrorist and in time we treated them that way. In fact, more Americans died from fentanyl poisoning in the past year than all terrorist attacks across the globe in the past 100 years. Oh my God, how sad. In order to save our country, particularly our next generation, God help us, excuse me, we must do more to get fennel off our streets. Amen. The governor was joined at the round table discussion and press conference by the DPS director, Steve McCraw. DPS Regional Director, West Texas Region, Jose Sanchez, Midland County Judge Terry Johnson, Ector County Sheriff Mike Griffiths, Midland County Sheriff Chief Deputy Benny Matlock, Odessa Police Chief Mike Girk, 
Midland Police Chief Seth Herman, Midland Memorial Hospital District Police Chief Steve McNeil. Governor Abbott also directed DPS and law enforcement agencies to identify Texas gangs that support Mexican drug cartels and seize their assets in order to disrupt cartel networks operating in Texas communities as thousands of Texans have been poisoned unwittingly by counterfeit pills laced with the deadly synthetic OPED. Pills, candy, candy bars, all they got to do is take a needle and shoot it. The little kids don't know any different. Here, would you like, would you like a piece of candy bar? Halloween's coming. I've got a piece of candy for your, for your bucket. Here, have a piece. God forbid. Anything. You can be sitting in a restaurant having a meal. Let's just say you and your wife, maybe two or three children are with you, or all of your children, how many you got, and you're sitting there, but somebody gets up and goes to the bathroom, and while the mother or father is tending to the children, telling them to clean their plates, eat their vegetables and everything, somebody can just hump right by, take a syringe under the coat, poke it through the fabric, and shoot it on the food. Am I wrong? Please leave a comment. Oh, please pray. Oh, my God. With Mexican drug cartels disguising fentanyl as counterfeit pills targeting children with rainbow fentanyl pills, the gov governor emphasizes in his letter that this immediate decisive action is needed from the Biden administration to combat this deadly crisis impacting the nation. <clears throat> oh, I want to say so much, but my language would not be proper. I'm sorry. Yesterday, the governor sent a letter to state agency leaders directing them to ramp up efforts to combat the fennel crisis by preparing for the next legislative session with statutory changes, budget pri priorities, other initiatives that will enhance Texas' ability to combat fennel deaths across the state. The letter further directs state agencies to coordinate efforts to raise awareness of fennel's lethality and prevalence. prevalence. Read Governor Abbott's executive order designating Mexican drug cartels as terrorist organizations and the letter to the Biden administration requesting federal terrorist classifications. Uh, now the letter, I don't know if I can get to it. Um... Let me see here if it'll come up. I don't know. Hang on with me just a minute. All I've already fallen victim cartels that are producing. Okay, I've got so much lined up here. Um, I want that letter. I want that letter that was written. That's what I'm looking for here. I don't know. If any of you can find that letter, I would really appreciate it. And post it. Please. I want to read that letter. I don't think I'm going to find it here. Let me see if I can click on this, if it will bring up anything. Uh, Joint Task Force Alpha investigating leads to eight human smuggling indict indictments. Countering human sm smuggling is a moral imperative. The U.S. Department of Justice recently announced the arrest and indictment of eight alleged human smugglers. The investigation that led to the indictment was a part of Joint Task Force Alpha in collaboration between the DOJ, the Department of Homeland Homeland Security. This was September 23rd, 2022. The U.S. Department of Justice recently announced 
the arrest and indictment of eight alleged human smugglers. According to the DOJ, these arrests disrupted and dismantled a prolific human smuggling operation in Texas and across the southern United States. The investigation that led to the indictment was a part of Joint Task Force Alpha, a collaboration between the DOJ and the Department of Homeland Homeland Security to prevent cases of human smuggling originating from Central America and impacting communities along American southern borders. According to the DOJ, the alleged leader of the human smuggling operation was er Ermania Sereno Padre, 31. The other seven defendants are Kevin Daniel Newber, 41, Lloyd Bexley, 51, Jeremiah Dickens, 45, Laura Newber, 40, Katie Ann Garcia, 39, Pedro Herdu Abrigo, 33, Ola Olivera Padre Campuzana, 53. All eight were arrested in accordance with indictment issued by the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of Texas. The defendants were picked up by police officers in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Texas. The indictment notes that the eight defendants carried out the unlawful transportation and movement of migrants within the United States in deplorable conditions for profit. The organization allegedly used drivers to pick up migrants near the U.S.-Mexican border, transport them further into the interior of the United States, housed mi <clears throat> migrants in an Austin-based stash house, and used methods to transport migrants placed their lives in danger as they were frequently held in contained spaces with little ventilation. Remember those that died in that truck? How many of those was there? They had no air. They suffocated to death. Let alone probably heat, you know. Migrates transported from Mexico, Guatemala, and Colombia. The migrates paid the human smugglers to help them cross the U.S.-Mexican border illegally. According to the DOJ, defendants working for the human smuggling organization were allegedly paid as much as 2500 for each migrate they are unlawfully transported. Who paid them? Border Patrol agents have made 2.15 million apprehensions at the southern border in the fiscal year 2022 through October 2021. To September 2022, many resulting from smuggling operations according to U.S. Customs and Border Protection. This number meets and exceeds the number of arrests at the southern border last year, 1.73 million between October 2020 and September of 21. At DHS, countering human smuggling is a moral imper imperative, imperative a law enforcement priority and necessity for our national security. U.S. Department of Homeland Security Depu Deputy Secretary John Tane said, It is a central prank, plank, it is a central plank of our efforts to address irregular migrations, irregular migrations across the Western Hemisphere and to hold transnational criminal organizations accountable for perpetrating vile and horrific crimes. We are unwavering in our commitment and sending a strong message. If you manipulate and imperil, take advantage of struggling migrants, we are coming for you. This investigation is a perfect example of how we're bringing our agencies and components together to leverage the full force of the federal government to do just that. In a recent interview with the Austin Journal, Texas Public Policy Foundation policy scholar Celine Rodriguez, I think Rodriguez, uh, asserted that human smuggling is the pre precursor of human trafficking. People who conspire with human smugglers to illegally enter the United States typically incur in thousands of dollars of debt to make the trip. After entering the country illegally, these same people are often forced to pay off that debt through forced labor and sexual exploitation. 
which is the essence of the modern day slavery that is human trafficking. Oh my God. It's no telling what they do to those that they trap to sell drugs. God for, forgive me for thinking what I'm thinking, but it's gotta be horrific. I mean, the truth has to come out. Innocent people, that drug cartel, they don't care. That's what I say. I'll be back. Laters.